aka the Weather Gamer, bringing you EVL Season 7, because I never recorded a single video for this without what was going on. So, um, Something, I knew this wasn't making sense. This was week eight. So, spoiler, week eight, I lose. Um, I ended up forfeiting because I had no way of breaking the rest of his team. So, um, yeah, that was week eight. Why did it default me to that one? I don't know. Let's go back to week one. We'll talk about that when we get back to it. Um, week one, I play James. And I missed the focus blast, which sucked. That was a great start to my season missing it. This Pukamuku, I knew was gonna be super annoying to deal with. Toxics. Electivire, Toxics again. I was getting a little frustrated. And then he revealed he's protect, so he's sub toxic or he's toxic protect. Which really, really, really frustrated. And yeah, for that. that. It's stupid how uh, offensive Rillaboom is, and yet I can't make it work. I do get a Toxic Poison on the Dukamuku. He switches into Regirock, which was great for me because it allowed me to uh, get Regirock out, which was a huge, huge problem for Dragon Ball. Cinderace and Cinderace gets me into bulk. He did not sucker punch, so I 
had Zoroark disguised as Dragon Ball. And I asked him after the game why he didn't Sucker Punch, and he did not know if it was Dragon Ball or not. He didn't know if I was Dragon Ball or if I was Zoroark, and so he attacked in case I was Dragon Ball and substituted, um, keeping from getting a playing Dragon Dance or whatever. Um, so he attacked, I believe I'm Zoroark. I am. I'm Zoroark hiding behind my Dragon Ball side. And so, uh, yeah, when Cinderace comes in, I believe it was Bandit Ace. It's gonna be Dragapult versus the world. And then, just because I didn't want this thing sub toxic, protecting if it, that's what it was, uh, I'm sure it was unaware too. Oh, yeah, it was so. Yeah, so this thing was designed to just be annoying toxic everything and so I just sat back and then recovered so he had no way of touching me it was just toxic recovery um so Pult finishes this off with a dragon hearts so I win week one for going into week two versus RMS Dredagon a bit of a pain in the ass to start the game I need to look at Dredagon because it's a nice low tier dragon to maybe use. Um, he's got his Mega Main. This was dumb of me to stay in on this, but. Uh, Kirk comes in on Free Marina. Flip turn into Cinderace, which is actually Zorart, which I didn't mean to do. That was a mistake. And then Glalie is going to come in and just start pounding away at the. And then Breloom comes in, and Breloom's a problem. It really is. Cinderace, which is the Zoroark again. No, this was the Cinderace, wasn't it? No, this was Zoroark. I get the Cinder, the Crook off guard, which was great. He does go for Mach Punch. I was scouting to see if he was banded, and the way he was playing it, he was. Um, I do go for a Dragon Dance, freeze dry to break my sub, and then I just start Dragon Darting. Critical hit didn't matter. This turn right here is where I made the big brain play, because he was either, I wanted to see if he had Sucker Punch. I knew he had Dragon Claw, I wanted to see if he was attacking Sucker Punch to catch Dragon Bolt, or if he had a Havan Berry behind him or something. So I went for the sub to see if Dragon Claw to Dragon Claw, and I'd have to play the sub game to find out if he continue to try and just attack me. Luckily, we left leftovers. Um, between Toxic and Leftovers, I would have won that 1v1, but I almost attacked him through with one of my multi and both dying and dropping the this game. Um, instead, I'm able to sit behind a sub at plus one. It turns out he does have the Havana Harry, so it's a good thing I didn't get the dance off. And then this probably scared me because I thought it was going to play out. But, unfortunately, Pult's going to end up, uh, well, not unfortunately, unfortunately, Dragapult's going to come in and just do what Dragapult does and clean up with a 4 sweep, giving it 5 kills and 2 kills. So, I win week 2, I win week 3. I'm sitting pretty good. Week 3, my opponent never showed up. Um, so, I was given a 4 for one. So, it was 3-0 to start the season. Then I play Cammy in his dual weather team. It's Sun and Sand, and I over prep for Sand. I under prep for Sun. You're gonna see that happen. I did disguise Ferrothorn as. or Zorak as Ferrothorn against the last one, but I was surprised he stayed in. I did not expect him to stay in. He does get the defense rise, Orgo comes in, and I have him play around. It's, stu it's the stupid onset too, which really was annoying to deal with. I did not get the last one to deal with, so. Frame is going to come in, faster. Uh, I over predict with an ice beam.
but Morgrim actually was also a big pain in the ass. Um, I do catch him with a hyper voice though, which was great. Um, catch him with that. He is annoyingly bulky with the Wi Fi signal there. And then I find out that this thing has Clinker. I did not know that he was going to get Clinker. So then I start Moonblasting, and I see Moonblast is over 50%, which is nice. I can just pound him down with uh, Moonblasts. Venusaur comes in, I do get Cinderace in, I bulk up, and then I start unleashing plus one fire boost to Pyroballs. Um, unfortunately, Morgrim still was too much for me to handle. Uh, this gets real close here. I have to burn out this sun turn with Venusaur. Trying to scout out the Earth, which I see. And then Venus will get to knock off in case you didn't know. Um, I go for a bulk up, and then I'm just gonna try. He does Thunder Wave me, which is unfortunate. If I had substituted instead of bulk up in front of Venusaur, like Cammy and I. Cammy and I needed to talk about this one afterwards. If I had changed my order of plays and substituted the turn I bulked up, if I had substituted the turn I had bulked up, I might have been able to live because if I wasn't paralyzed, I beat the Diance E. I had um, Iron Head and I was faster than it. And at plus one Powerball, I was also going to crank out this Morgrim. It just, it sucked. It was, it was a rough loss. But I take a 2-0 loss there. Let's move to 3 and one. Then I played Revan, and I kind of spoiled this infamous Clefable set that I've tried running now multiple times. But Revan is going to beat me again with a very stupid... Clefable set that just absolutely pissed me off. I thought I had this game going because I was beating the cosmic powers and I immediately got an arrow because I'm afraid of this thing cosmic powering because I'm iron. Oh, he's weakness policy. Joy. He's recovery iron head weakness policy. I need flinches and I cannot get a flinch and he's out healing. Yeah. And then he goes to the cosmic power. Can you guess his set at home? What is Revan's set? At this point, if the game's over, uh, there's really no point. I'm just like, I didn't get the flinches I need. I'm just here beating my skull in against this Clefable, or yeah, Clefable is it? Cosmic Powers and Soft Boils itself up to Oblivion to just rip my team apart. Hey, there's Flamethrower. And then he's plus four, plus four, plus two, plus two. And just starts storm powering me to death. And his magic yards will be very unaware of something. He's just gonna rip me to shreds with a stupid clefable. Unbelievable. I have tried to run that set so many times now. But, yeah, Revan smoked me fine. I did get to play Penguin with six. And, uh, this Flygon was a bit of a problem. He is dual screen for Snarl. This is an attack drop. I'm gonna get his screens off the board because I don't want to deal with them. Uh, his spirit broke and killed Zor this point in my heart. I do crit with Cinderace, which was amazing that I was able to crit through. It does drop a Draco, which is interesting because I wasn't expecting a special fly 
going on. That kind of threw me for a loop. And then at this point, I was very, very frightened of um, weakness policy macros coming in and just really going to get all that. Um, drops Draco. This is where, so Penguin and I talked. And Penguin made a critical, critical error by Draco. Had he not Draco to kill Arrow, he would have been in a better position because I live a Draco once he's at minus two. And then I can Dragon Dance and he has no priority and I can just beat him down. Especially after I sub. He does hit the high throw. Phantom Force to avoid a little list. Because I, I was thinking he was going to be a list. And then once I was able to get that, um, Dragon Ball was about to be a game. Dragon Ball was. So, Penguin did make that game a lot more difficult for me, and I told him he was playing super, super well after the game. I still stand by the back of the it's super, super low, so... Yeah, then we get to playing real here in 7. Even mind, I lost week 8. So at this point, I'm 4-3 and three fighting for playoffs in week 8, potentially. Do not get the flame body burn. Hitmon Lee is going to bulk up. But I do get the lava plume burn, which sucks. Had I not gotten the Lava Plume Burn, I think I would have been in an okay position, but because of the Lava Plume Burn, then Nihilego comes in, and Nihilego is actually going to just destroy me. Because it lived a Hyper. And I didn't want to give it plus two. But, Power Gem. Is a speed boost. Foul Play, luckily doesn't kill Dragapult on me. Then there's a wall ring. This is faster than the time created. That was pretty cool. And Brick Break, I don't know why. I don't know if they ended up being changes in the whole thing. At this point, I was on two. I get the horn and kill the DK. Garchomp Mega comes in. I finished ninth. 
four and four minus, uh, I don't know why that says I'm, oh yeah, because I did finish sixth, uh, minus one. So I had two NCL and VBL both ended with neutral minus ones, and PBAL was also neutral minus one. Apparently I've been favoring that lately. Um, but yeah, so we still have more to come. Um, as far as the Mon records go, Dragapult is now the second place um, champion behind Zero Aura, and I guarantee you by the time I draft Dragapult as many times as I've drafted Zero Aura, Dragapult is going to pass Zero Aura. It is my favorite dragon type to use. It is just so damn bored. I need to figure out how to mix up my sets though, because like with VBL by the end of the season, Dragapult had gone from super kills down to like nothing. I think that's partially because people see how I play it early season and then they change it, their play style and counter it. Dragapult's also number two in the whoops, um, kill death ratio at plus 24. Cinderace is the new number three um, for with 39 and 26. So I average about 10 kills a season that I use Cinderace. Um, Cinderace is also the top five. You can see that Gen 8 mods have been very good to me with those two. I'm still, you know, a ton of dragons in the top 25. I don't think anyone came skyrocketing up. You know, Dragapult and Cinderace are both kind of just sitting up there because they're my top two right now. Um, Zoroark's hanging around. So, right around that <laughs> line. So, but that's going to be it for this video. I will see you guys for the next time. I don't know when I'm returning to BBL. I don't know if I'm coming back for the next season or not. It depends on how many leagues I'm in because I am hard locking myself to three leagues um, at a time. So, with that, I will see you guys next time.